The reason why you are here is because you are looking for something. But God is saying to you, I need your totality. There's something God is looking inside, inside you. Because God does not see the way men see. He knows your heart. There was a woman about four years ago in our church. She will be crying to me, Pastor, I need a job. I need a job. I said that is the only thing that she can request for. But don't worry, but what God is saying is that if, we get, if you get the job now, he will disappear. They no, God forbid, but Pastor, me again. No, no, not at all. Okay. No problem. We began to pray and something happened. She got the job. She got the job. Is that not what she was praying for? <laughs> she got the job. First week, second week, third week. One month. Okay. I called her. Madam, he said, Oh, Pastor, I'm sorry. You know, I, I just want to ask after your welfare. Till this moment, I've not seen her. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God knows the heart that will serve him genuinely. He knows the people that will receive the blessing and run away. But there's something they fail to realize. Those are the just little things, least of what God wants to do. That is the least. Hallelujah. That is it. Because God has many things in stock for you. He's searching the heart. He knows the heart that will say, Lord, help me. I want to be a charitable man or a charitable woman. I want to help the needy. I want to help the poor. He knows. And he knows the heart that will say, okay, if you give me this money, they must take in London. That latest car I'm going to ride inside there. But what you've forgotten is that all those people that you see riding big, big cars, what is riding them is more than that car they are riding. What is riding them is more than the car that they are riding. It is God that sees the inside. Hallelujah. Men look at the outward appearance. First Samuel 16 verse 7. But God looked into the heart. So God knows the heart that serves it genuinely. God knows the heart that pretends in the heart of God. God knows the heart that really loves Him. God knows the heart that is doing His will. Hallelujah. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Mark 12 verse 30 and 31. That was where Jesus summarizes the Ten Commandments into two. Hallelujah. Mark 12, verse 30 and 31. The time shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, spirit, and strength. For this is the first commandment. And second is this. Love thy neighbor as I said. Which is the greatest commandment. Mark 12, 30 and 31. So God knows the heart that will serve him genuinely. Because he knows our capacity. He knows what you can contain. He knows beyond you. He has seen ahead of you. He knows your beginning from your end. And he knows the end from your beginning. So there is somebody here today. By the time you leave this gathering, your life will never remain the same. Amen. What you need to know, the kingdom will be sent for you in Jesus' name. Amen. The kingdom of God will rule over the affairs of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. You are not here to play. The Bible says, and Jabez was more honorable, more than his brethren. First Corinthians 4, verse, verse 9 and 10. Somebody that was more honorable, why was he suffering? Hello? And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Can honorable suffer? Honorable can they suffer? No. Why was he suffering? The Bible says our mother gave him that name because she bore her in sorrow. Bitterness. 
But there was a day. He called on his Allah. The time is coming when you don't know what to do. Call unto your Allah. And your Allah is Jesus. The Bible says he called on the God of Israel. If you can bless me indeed. Keep me from evil. And the kingdom passed back. And the Bible says his request were granted. People that know his beginning. They did not know his end. And somebody here today. People have known your beginning. I stand on the rock of ages to declare to you, they will never know your end. Yes, I say they will never know your end. Yes, Kingdom passed and granted him his request. Jabez did something that we are going to do at the end of today. He turned his pain into prayer. He turned his pain into prayer. And something, heaven moves, kingdom moved. The Bible says all his requests, how many of them oh. were granted? How many of you want your request to be granted to you? So shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Yeah. The Bible says all his requests. Thank you, Father. That's said by someone here. I saw as if you are in a car. And in that car, there are two series there. Two series in the car. God now said to me, Can two captains be in a ship? I don't know who God is speaking to. There are two people directing you, God and other person. Two captains cannot stay in one ship. You understand the message. God said there are some people that you normally call to tell them pray for you what is God saying, especially back in Nigeria. The Lord said to tell you, you better stick to me. The devil is using that one as your waypoint. He said, as you tell you, you don't need any confirmation. You have received a lot of confirmation. He said, what are you looking for? Stay with me, and I will do the impossible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kingdom will answer for your sake. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Follow me. I will make you fish out of The Bible says something in the book of Luke chapter 5. From verse 1 to 11. Luke 5 from verse 1 to 11. The Bible says there was a man called Peter. A professional fisherman who have told around 24 hours and he caught nothing and the kingdom was coming the bible said the kingdom they, these men have already washed their nets and the kingdom choose to sit in peter's boat then somebody here god will sit in sit inside you Amen. he sat there and began to preach after preaching he said to peter Launch into the day. Peter said that. What are you talking about? If there is anything you know at all, it's carpentry job. Because Jesus was a carpenter. Yes. Me, I'm telling you I'm a professional fisherman. I've done all this thing, I caught nothing. So what are you talking about? The kingdom said, just do it. He said, okay, never the next at your word. If you say so. And the Bible says, a court man. Why did you think they caught me? God opened my eyes to see that when the kingdom was preaching in Peter's boat, the fish came to hear him preach. And they said to Peter, just point, just cast your net over there. Peter did not cast nets, but only one net. It was only one net. Because the Bible says, he said, cast your net. But it was only one net. What do you think will happen if they cast all the nets? God is saying there's somebody here looking at me. You are about to take a step. You want to relocate to outside London. God said, I should tell you, your glory is where you are. 
He said, your glory is where you are.